Happy New Year everyone and welcome back to Dark Side of the Mic. And this is a project I've been looking at over the festive break, specifically at DIY lavalier mics. And can we make or more or less assemble a lavalier mic for under $10 to $15 that is as good as or perhaps even better sounding than something 5 to 10 times the cost? So in order to do this, I've sourced the cheapest labs I could find on Amazon and AliExpress, fully expecting them to sound like utter trash out of the box, but with the intention of replacing the capsule for something a little bit better. And essentially that's all a lavalier mic is. It's a small electric capsule wired into a mini jack plug, and that'll run off plug and power from your recording device. So I was looking for existing mic options where the housing could be disassembled and reassembled using the existing cable with a new capsule. So we bought a 299 lavalier from Amazon called the Neweth Lavalier Mic. Links will be in the description for those and that one accepts a 6mm capsule. We also bought one from AliExpress which accepts 10mm capsules. Both of these options include foam windscreens and the clips as well. Both of the head baskets unscrew to allow the easy removal of the old capsule and it's just a case of soldering the existing cable to a new capsule. This is a little bit fiddly but with a steady hand and some swear words I was able to do that without too much trouble. So without further ado let's have a look at the three capsules that I bought and at the moment we're recording everything today into my Zoom F1 which is connected directly to Adobe Edition as the interface. And for this introduction, we're using the Rode Lavalier Go, really popular lav mic, at about 50 to 60 pounds. So let's just stop for a second of silence on that, and we'll just record the noise floor. Okay, so you're now listening to the Panasonic WM61A. This is a 6mm omnidirectional electric capsule housed in the newest mic. This capsule is now discontinued, but there are still plenty available to buy online from various dealers. And I got a pack of 10 from my chronic here in the UK for about £40, so £4 per capsule. Again, I'll put links down in the description for these. These capsules are fairly well known in the hobbyist audio world and are known for their exceptionally flat frequency response. They're often used in the creation of homemade measurement microphones. They offer a really very good signal to noise ratio and I think they sound really very good. It has a sensitivity of negative 34 dB, so we're about 7 from 10 recording into my Zoom F1. But let's stop for a few seconds of silence and again I'll put the practical noise floor on the screen. And next up we have the Pui Audio AOM5024 HDR, which is obviously a bit of a mouthful, but this is a 10mm omnidirectional capsule that we've housed in the AliExpress mic. And I was able to get 10 of these delivered from Mauser for about £39, so again it works out to be about £4 a capsule. Now this mic has really very impressive specs with a self noise of about 14 dBA, which is pretty much class leading as far as lavaliers go. And to put that in some kind of perspective, the Rode Lavalier Go quotes 27 dB of self-noise, so that's pretty much double that of the Pui audio capsule. Fairly sensitive too at negative 24 dB, so our gain on the zoom is down at 5 out of 10. But let's stop for a few seconds of silence and again we'll record the noise floor here. And finally we have the Primo EM272Z1 capsule. Again it's a 10mm omnidirectional capsule that we've housed in the AliExpress mic. Now this capsule is available in the UK for about £16 delivered from Mic Booster, so it's considerably more expensive. Just like the Pui though, the Primo has an excellent self noise of 14 dBA. It also has a superior maximum input sound pressure level of 122 dB in comparison to the 110 of the Pui and the Rode Lav Go, which in practical terms means it should be able to handle louder sources before clipping. Now for spoken word that's not really going to be a big issue unless you're expecting a lot of raised voices or shouting in perhaps hostile noisy environments. But for normal speaking I don't really see the SPL rating being a huge benefit. It's fairly sensitive too at negative 28 dB, so our gain on the zoom is about 6 out of 10. But let's stop for a few seconds of silence and we'll measure that noise floor again. Okay, to get a sense of how all these lavaliers sound in practice, we're going to read a short extract from the New York Trilogy from Paul Auster, and we'll jump between the different mics. We all want to be told stories, and we listen to them in the same way we did when we were young. 
we imagine the real story inside the words. And to do this, we substitute ourselves for the person in the story, pretending that we can understand him because we understand ourselves. This is a deception. We exist for ourselves, perhaps, and at times we even have a glimmer of who we are. But in the end, we can never be sure as our lives go on. We become more and more opaque to ourselves, more and more aware of our own incoherence. No one can cross the boundary into another, for the simple reason that no one can gain access to himself. Okay, so let's round up with some final thoughts and we'll stay on the Primo EM272 for now, which for me I think is the best one out of the lot, but I think they all sound pretty good. The Panasonic seems to be incredibly close to the road, but with perhaps a tad more extension and sparkle in the high end, which just pips it for me. The Pui audio capsule doesn't have that extension by contrast, it rolls off that high end a lot more, and as a result feels considerably more meaty with a prominent low mid emphasis, so it might be quite a good one on a thinner voice to add a bit of body there. But the Primo seems to bring out the best of all the others. It has considerably more presence and extension in the high end, producing a really full, well-balanced sound out the box. That doesn't really sound like a lavalier, it sounds like a much bigger mic. And out of the other three, I think this is the one that will need the least EQ afterwards. It is the most expensive one though, but you can still make three of these for the cost of one Rode Lav Go, so that might be a compelling option for some of you who can work a soldering iron. But let me know what you think, what one did you like best in the comments, and let us know if you want to take on this project. So until next time then, do take care, stay safe, and we'll see you again soon.